Module 8 Measures of Dispersion or Interval Estimates Section 1 Range, IQR and MAD First is range. As I already told you, the exclusive and inclusive range. So the range, when you think about the range, the probably the first range that comes into your mind is exclusive range. That is very simple. Maximum minus minimum of any data set is called the range. So the difference between the largest and the smallest values, that is something called nominal limits. The maximum and minimum is known as nominal limits. Versus inclusive range, the other range that we already described in uh, uh, when we discussed about the variations is the term called inclusive range that is defined based on the real limits, not nominal limit. So, with uh, defined, so of course, you know that uh, this the, uh, the two two uh, ranges are there, but still the exclusive range is what the normal range is, uh, what it means. So, for example, a data set uh, has uh, 100, 95, 135, 45, and 70. So, to calculate this range, first of all, you have to sort it in ascending order or descending order. Ascending order is preferred. Then you have to find out which is the maximum, then minimum, and just subtract it. So, in this data set, it is 80, 80 is the range of this data set. Next is IQR or interquartile range or edge spread. So this is interquartile range. So it is actually the difference between two quartiles, upper quartile and lower quartile. Upper quartile is at 75th percentile, while lower quartile is 25th percentile. So if you want to calculate IQR, also known as edge spread, you have to calculate first 75th percentile, and then you have to calculate 25th percentile, and the subtraction of these two numbers is called IQR or the edge spread. So, IQR can be visually summarized by box and whisker plot that we have already seen that. So, today also we will see what the box and whisker plot is all about. So, the, the box and whisker has a rectangular box in the center. So, its left side is at 25th percentile while the right side is at 75th percentile. While in between there is a line. So, that line will intersect at the median. So, that is called a box. And then the whiskers will be going to both sides. So the whiskers will be going first to the minimum left or uh, right side will be maximum. And box and whisker plot can be either vertically arranged or the horizontally arranged. So the box and whisker is basically the five number summary in a visually represented manner. So the five numbers are minimum, first quartile, median, then third quartile and maximum that is called the, the box and whisker plot, whisker as in the cat's whisker. So in this diagram, you can see that the whisker box and whisker plot of the aflatoxin uh, data set that is actually in a horizontally arranged, while in the, this diagram, you can see that uh, this is the box and whisker plot in which is vertically arranged. That is, uh, just by looking at this complex data set, you can easily make out that till 50, uh, you know, 50 years, uh, the age is 50s you are going to increase. I mean, the average salary of uh, citizens are increasing. Then there is a tendency from 50, the average salary is decreasing. So that is what this uh, box and whisker plot summarizes. So that complicated data set, you can easily, uh, uh, presentable manner, you can summarize through these box and whisker plots. So next is median absolute deviation, which is also a non-parametric method like uh, percentile and uh, uh, edge spread which I just described, all these are non-parametric methods. Median absolute deviation of a sample of values of the variable is the median of the absolute values of the deviations about the sample median. So first you have to calculate what is the sample median, then each value has to be subtracted with the sample median, then you have to take the absolute score and then take the median of that value is known as the median absolute deviation. So some of the individual variations about the sample median will be zero, just like the mean. You know, the uh, each uh, uh, value subtracted with the mean. So it is some, some values will be negative, some values will be positive, so it will add it up into the zero. So that is actually makes no sense. So that is why you have to take the absolute value. So that is the term median absolute deviation comes from. So to calculate median absolute deviation, first you have to arrange the set of values in ascending order. 
So that will be the first column. Then calculate the median of these values. That is based nothing but the middle value. So if there is an obvious middle value, you have to take the average of the two middle values. Then subtract each of the values with the median, not mean but the median and enter into the next column. Then this will have certain values negative, certain values will be positive. So take only the absolute value. That means that take, you know convert negative values into the positive values. Then again you sort it and take the median of that sorted list is called median absolute deviation. Let us work with one of sample set. This is called blood sugar levels of the five individuals. So as you can see that 80, 70, 95, 100 and 125. How to calculate median absolute deviation? Let us, let us do it together. Median absolute deviation as I told you is the median of the deviations about the sample median. So there are two median calculations in it. All right, so let us first write the set of the blood glucose levels of the five individuals. So these values are 80, then 70, then 95, then 100, then 125. As you see that these are not in order, so first step is to put that in the order, in the ascending order. So let us actually put that the values as, for example, x. So here ascending order would be 80. So this 80, the, the lowest value will be starting, so it is actually instead of 80, it is 70. So let us start with the 70 here. So the lowest value is 70. Then comes 80. Then comes 95, then comes 100, and finally it is 125. So this is the first step in calculating the median absolute deviation. So here we have to calculate first, this is already in ascending order. So this order, so of, uh, we have to calculate the median. So the median is very simple, it's a middle number because this is actually a uh, number of, uh, uh, the, the size of this one is a odd number, so only 5, so it is, this value is the median. Next is x minus x bar. Here x minus x bar here is the x bar means the median. So each value we will have to subtract with the median. So first will be 70, 70 minus the median. Median we already calculated 95. So 70 minus 95 is equal to minus 25. So this is the value coming to be the x minus x bar. So if you calculate for the rest of the things, so 80 minus 95 will be minus 15. The next will be 0, 95 minus 95 is 0, then comes 5, and finally it is 30. So as you see that this is not actually uh, the absolute values because many of these one, these two values are in negative. And if you actually do a sum of all this value, it, it comes to be a 0 or near to the 0 because this is actually the median. So if had it been mean, it will be perfectly 0 coming. So this, as you see that 25 plus 15 is 40 and uh, this will be 35, so it is actually minus 5, so it is not really 0, but had it been mean, then definitely this will add on to the 0. So to get rid of that problem, so we have to actually do an absolute of this value. So let us calculate the absolute of x minus x bar. So absolute, this term means that minus will become positive, so minus 25 will become plus 25. Then this will be 15, then 0, then 5, then 30. So now you see that this is again, this is not in order. So let us actually put that in ascending order because 25 is high, then low, 0, 5, 30. So it is not in order. So to make it in order, so first will be 0, then comes 5, then comes 15, then comes 25, and finally it is 30. So this is this is what uh, uh, the scores are already now in the order. This is an ascending order. So the final step in calculation of median absolute deviation is, so these are the median, the deviations about the sample median and we have to calculate the median of this score. So the median is this value, the middle number is the median. So the 15 is the answer for the median absolute deviation of this particular data set. Median absolute deviation is one of the most robust test statistic. So robust means that it is least uh, affected by the outliers, you know, extreme values. So basically the median absolute deviation is one example of a non-parametric non statistics. So it is not much affected by uh, the outliers. So another thing is that, of course, uh, coming up next is med mean absolute deviation. So median absolute deviation as well as mean absolute deviation, both are least affected by the outliers, but 
comparing with these two things definitely median absolute deviation has an edge over it because it is a non-parametric method. So median absolute deviation multiplied by 1.4826 that is a constant 1.4826 is uh, going to be the standard deviation so that is one of the uh, you know a thumb rule well it is not exactly the standard deviation but you can actually approximate the standard deviation of a data set by multiplying uh, this mad with 1.4826 if the distribution is normal so in case the median is plotted in the column or bar then probably you would like to present the uh, you know the uh, error bar with median absolute deviation so if it's presented as median then it's always better to give uh, either the range or the median absolute deviation as the error bar rather than going for standard deviation. So standard deviation makes no sense with the median. See, standard deviation makes sense with the mean, not with the median. Coming next is mean absolute deviation. So which is quite similar to the median. So instead of going for two median, so as uh, you can uh, recap it, median absolute deviation, we, there are two median calculations, the first step as well as the final step, right? So in this case, there are two mean calculations, the first step and the final step and subtraction is with the mean that is the only difference here so mean absolute deviation is the arithmetic mean of the absolute values of the deviations about the sample mean the true values of deviations about the sample mean is going to be zero for sure you know because that is how you define the mean arithmetic averages so this is also known as the average deviation so the mean absolute deviation is also called the average deviation so as I told you, sum of individual variations will always be adding upon to the zero. So let us do this same work for the blood sugar levels of the same data set and let us see that how to calculate the mean absolute deviation using that same data. So first let us write down the x values of these blood, uh, you know, glucose levels. So x values were 80, then 70, then 95, then 100 then 125 these were the values of the x here so as you remember for the mad that is median absolute deviation the next step would have been the sorting of the values so sorting of the values in ascending order is required for the calculation of the median but as this one is the mean absolute deviation such sorting is not required so to calculate the mean first of all we have to total it so if you total it it will be 470 and n is number of the elements of this data set is 5 so 470 divided by 5 is equal to the mean that is 94 so 94 is the mean of this data set so next is going to be x minus x bar so here x bar means a mean so let us calculate for each value so first is 80 80 minus 94 is minus 14 then comes minus 24 then 1, then 6, and finally 125 minus 94 is 31. So remember that if you add on all these numbers, the sum is going to be 0. So that is how that you are defining the mean. So it will definitely be 0. So this x minus x bar makes no sense if you sum it. So we have to get rid of this 0 here so that one way out is to make the absolute value. So that is why it is an absolute deviation. So we have to calculate the absolute values of all these score. So absolute values as I told you is simple but negative becomes positive. So 14, 24, 1, 6 and 31. Next step is to calculate the mean of these values. So to calculate the mean first you have to total it. So total comes to be 76. Now 76 you have to divide with 5, so that is the 5 elements are there, 5 is equal to 15.2, 15.2 is the mean absolute deviation, so if you can remember that MAD that we calculated earlier, MAD had been 15, so median absolute deviation is 15 while mean absolute deviation is little bit higher 15.2 though it, both are quite similar. In summary, a large data set can effectively be summarized by a set of numbers that is known as intervals. These estimates are also known as the measures of dispersion or spread. Range is simply the maximum value of the data set minus minimum value of the data set that is called exclusive range. Interquartile range is simply the difference between 75th percentile and 25th percentile. It is also like a range but instead of maximum and minimum it is 75th percentile and 25th percentile. 
visual representation of the five number summary that is minimum, first quartile, median, third quartile and the max is achieved via box and whisker plot. So median absolute deviation or MAD of the sample of values of the variable is the median of the absolute values of the deviations about the sample median. Mean absolute deviation says arithmetic mean or average of the absolute values of the deviations about the sample mean. Thank you so much.